Today we are going to reupholster this bar stool. Now the seat cushion, we've done a very similar round bar stool, so we're going to skip showing that process and just refer you to that video. We're going to focus on the backrest. This is done up in more of a modern vinyl, and we're going to switch that over to kind of a mottled brown leather. Stick around. So with the backrest detached, we can get a look at that and we may even be able to use this to pattern out our pieces of leather for the new upholstery. But what's interesting to look at on these backrests is the back side of it. Sometimes if it's the back of a chair, it may have a separate panel that's upholstered on its own and then applied with tack strips. In this case, that's not what's been done and we're just going to match up to the original work which is basically just a sewn pouch and then the bottom is just turned under and stapled onto the wood frame. Okay, we've got the staples pulled and the old upholstery removed. You can either use scissors or a seam ripper just to open up those pieces and we'll use that to pattern things for the leather pieces. You know, normally I'd use these leather marking pens. I've got about 20 of them from Tandy and guess what, they're all dried up. It reminds me of one time I was in an upholstery leather class and the instructor broke out a Sharpie pen and it was almost, I felt myself gasp. I was like, you're writing on leather with a Sharpie marker? And yeah, he did and it worked fine. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure that it's flat and you don't get a chance to erase it, but it still works. Just be confident in your pattern. Go ahead and trace it out and then cut it out with some sharp shears. You know, if I'm making long straight cuts, these 12 inch shears are certainly the thing to use, but on these little panels, it's all curves, a little eight or nine inch pair of shears will be your best bet. This is the edge that'll be pulled and stapled in place, so I might leave myself an extra inch to work with and trim that in place. Okay, these two little panels look very similar to one another, so label the back so you keep track of that. Don't let it alarm you that the patterns don't align here. In fact, that's what it gives it the natural tendency to curve and match the shape of the actual backrest form. So no problem at all there. We'll go up to the sewing room and start stapling these panels together and get ready to sew them up. So we've got our two panels laid show side together here and lined up. And we'll just use a plier stapler you temporarily attach those two panels. We'll staple all the way along the edges, making sure to stay within the seam allowance, and then we'll sew up that blind seam. And as we finish stapling down to the other end, you can see how it starts to give this cover just a little bit of shape because the two panels are not the same size. Wait, one more staple right there. Okay, so half inch seam allowance, and we'll back tack a few stitches to get started here, lock in that blind stitch. And then we'll just carry on. We've got a, a deep brown color thread in a 92 weight, and this is a number 19 needle that we're using. Usually I go for a size 19 or 20 needle when I'm using that weight thread with leather. We'll just carry on and stitch the full perimeter of this and then we'll turn it right side out and make a decision if we want to do a top stitch on this project. And a little back tack at the end of the seam. Well, just a basic blind seam and you can decide from there if you want to lay down a little row of top stitches. Regardless of how you proceed, you'll want to remove the staples. These are just to temporarily hold things together and they don't become part of the finished project. If you do decide to add a top stitch, just remember to turn the seam allowance towards the back side of this backrest cushion. Remember we labeled that in an earlier step. Also what you'll think about is gently opening up the seam, just kind of 
spreading it apart slightly as you apply the pressure to do that top stitch. And that just makes things lay a little bit nicer. And I've always found that top stitching leather just makes it behave a little better as you go to install it on the project. And so just take your time and work around, top stitch the full perimeter. So we're coming down to the home stretch on this top stitch and the things to think about are just turning that seam allowance and gently separating the seam. So the front of the cover doesn't look much different with a top stitch, but on the back you can see how it starts to add some form and some structure to the cover. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing probably depends on the nature of your project and experience will tell you whether you like a top stitch or not, but it's become one of my favorite details when working with leather. So I was happy with the comfort of the old cushion and we're just gonna leave that foam in place. It's got a little bit of silk film on there still. This is just to help ease the friction. Upholsters often use silk film just to help slip the cover over with a little less resistance. Even so, it looks like this will be a bit of a snug fit. So we'll work this down. Leather does stretch. It's just a property you get used to and work with when you're doing leather projects. But sometimes I'll factor in a, a mount for leather stretch, usually a quarter inch or so per every 10 inches of panel length. This is such a small project though, I didn't factor anything in for leather stretch. And this back panel, all this has to do is make it down over the edge of this plywood form so we can staple that down. So we need to come about three quarters of an inch further and I think we'll be in good shape. You can see at top, we still have a little bit of slack there. So there's plenty of room to come down. It's just, we're hitting a little friction and you gotta work through that. Sometimes it can be actually pretty physical work for your hands and fingers. Okay, so once you like the overall lines and you're convinced that it's gonna fit and you wanna commit to it, just pay attention to where that seam falls because once you set these first couple staples, that will all be pretty well decided. I'm pretty happy with it now. It just needs to have some tension drawn out. And so we'll start, this is the back of the cushion. And so we'll, we'll draw that back panel down keeping an eye on how far that pulls the seam over towards the back. And I just want it to land right on top as a real natural look for that. So once we have any of the wrinkles worked out of that, we'll set a shot or two down into the bottom of the plywood and double check the look at the top. It looks like that's pulling right where we want it to. From there, just work out towards the corners, check frequently, Make sure it looks the way you want it to on the top side. As you get out to the corners, you can actually set your staples on the inside of the plywood. And that'll just give you more room to negotiate the top layer. So now we're all tucked in from the back side, and this is the front of the cushion. And what you want to do is make sure that that cut line from your pattern still looks good. You'd ideally like to have about a half inch of leather that projects beyond the back so you can fold that under. And it looks like our Sharpie line is still right where we want to cut. So we'll trim that to final size. Out at the corners, I'll stay a little bit wide of my line for now and trim that as I button down the corner. So now you're really paying attention to the front of the cushion and getting the tension that you desire just based on what look you're after. Fold that edge over as you bring it down to the bottom and staple it in place. So just keep working out towards one corner and you want to be a little bit neater with your staples here than say a dust cover. Front side of the cushion, back side of the cushion. For working that corner, what you want to do is pull a little slack from the back to the front and get one staple in right there. Set that staple, then you can just bring it back at kind of a 45 degree angle before you tuck your edge in and just finish off that row of staples right out to the corner.
press that leather down. You can come back and hammer it a little bit. Leather actually responds quite well to hammering if you want to flatten an area. Just work out towards this last corner. So here's that spot, front of the cushion, back of the cushion. Here's that spot where you want to pull a little bit of this material to cover your corner and just shoot that into the front side of the plywood. Got a little bit too much material here at the corner, so we'll keep trimming that back gradually. Just pull the side in and get a shot right in there from front to back to secure that corner. Once you have that done, you can just lay your pleat down and finish stapling out to the corner. And you can just use a little trim hammer to pound down the seam a little bit. I'm not pounding down the staples here because my staple gun already sets those nice and flush or a little bit into the material of the leather. I'm just actually hammering down the leather itself just to flatten that seam and give a nice crisp appearance. Granted, this is the bottom of the cushion, but you still want it to look as good as it can. And then even the corner itself will flatten out nicely with a little work with the hammer. And finally, we'll just reattach the hardware and get this cushion installed on the chair. Alright guys, so that's the process if you want to switch over a more modern looking vinyl stool to one done in leather. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.